Seems like this ROV was disabled by the veils, like the other one. This can't be right. The mapping scans report a large physical anomaly just north of here. From the data, it looks like... a structure. That's impossible. Maybe the veils fried the sensors? Either way, we should go check it out. A structure? Shelf edge. Past the shelf, there is only the dark of the descending slope. Dark water. There's nothing here but the silt flickering in the suit's headlamps. That is definitely a structure. Angular rocks. Some strangely geometric rocks sit in the dark. What are these formations? Unknown structure. A huge flat structure bedded into the seafloor. Could Monet have built this? What are we looking at here? It appears to be some kind of shaft cut into the bedrock. I can't see the bottom. Who made this? It looks like it's been here far longer than anything else. Dark shaft. A yawning black shaft that descends into the seafloor. An anomaly that must be solved. God, here we go. I wonder how far we're going to go down. We're starting from 1,510 meters. Oh, we only went down 12 meters? Oh, that's not it. That's just like one. We've gone down once, but we can keep going down. I guess I should scan each time, see if there's anything at each level. Whoa, that's something. And we can keep going down. But let's explore this first, of course. Open shaft. The suit's lamps reveal two dark holes on opposite sides of the shaft. Their torn edges thick with crimson rust. What in the hell is this? I'm so curious. Shadowed corridor. The bent entryway bulges inward like the interior corridor of some huge creature's distended body. Wait, what is that? Pale polyp. These pale creatures are scraping patterns into the walls. What are they? Let's see what we can find out. This almost motionless polyp with its waving cilia is anchored to the metal plating. Its pale flesh is drained of color. Sand choked room. Sand drifts soften the middle room. On the far wall, strange spirals glint in the headlamps as a pale creature obsessively traces their patterns. Collapsed room. The compartment is filled with sand and rock, which looks to have entered through the collapsed ceiling. Down some more. I can see something up there. Not something we can reach from here, but there is something up there to the northwest. And we can't go down anymore, so this is the bottom of the shaft. Not that far down from where we started. Entry seal. A huge round doorway sealed by a thin metal security iris. 
the plates of which are furred with orange rust. I think we're going to get to use our cutting tool for the first time. It's some kind of facility. What was happening down here? Why would someone bury this place so deep? We have to get inside. We can use the torch to cut through the seal. Fire it up. Prime. Uses some power. Ignite. That was satisfying. Breached corridor. Sand and rock fills one side of the access way. Dark holes in the walls and ceiling reveal layers of eaten away piping and ducts. Entry hall. Beyond the doorway, a vast dark space opens out in the rock filled with the skeletal remains of rusted machines. Whoa, the color changed. <laughs> red sediment. The waters... The water is filled with red flakes catching in the lamps. From the walls, rusticles hang in lumpen garlands. This place is huge. How the hell was it built down here? I'm sorry, I accidentally skipped what they just said. Uh, there's very little oxygen for the rebreather to cycle here, so we're running on reserves. Let's move. Okay. Oh yeah, we're slowly losing oxygen. Ruined hall. Once a loading bay or vehicle hangar, this domed atrium is now dark and distorted. It's huge sand drifts hiding piles of oxidized metal. God, this place is so eerie. What is it? Why does this place exist? And the music is creeping me out. Rusted platform. Above, a huge shelf lurches out of the curved roof of the bay, its underside hung with globular orange spines. derelict vehicle. The eaten away frame of a vehicle lies outside the lock, the canopy twisted open and fused in place. Arcology entry. A large open lock leads into the depths of what appears to be a corporate arcology. What secrets have been buried in this place? Open lock. Both doors of the massive main lock sit open. The entire arcology must be flooded. Whoa. What is that? Buried concourse. The vast volume of the arcology lies ahead, piled with rock and sand, drowned in this dark ocean. Those are Baikal markings. What was an exoplanet extraction core doing here? I worked for Baikal. Manet worked for Baikal. They built this suit. They built the base. They mine exoplanets, skim helium from gas giants. They help drive forward humanity's expansion. If they discovered life, we would have known. Everyone would have known unless something happened here. Something they didn't want anyone to know about. Did they discover while mining this place and sucking it to drive resources that there was life here and that they are perhaps mass murderers? who had massacred the life here. Y 
user X Otero. Dive recorder. Fragment. Massive breach. Life support will fail in two hours. Is there anyone from Baikal on this channel? Please respond. Massive breach. Derelict buildings. The main volume of the arcology is broken up by low buildings partitioned away from the space. Were these offices? Homes? Pale polyp. Scans suggest the creature is eroding the surface below through its cilia, absorbing nutrients from the oxidizing metal. Bright spirals. The metal walls of this passage are etched with strange spiral patterns. What made these? Some glisten with a thick mucus. Uh. What is this good for, by the way? A bit of oxygen. That's good. Spiral secretion. An ornate pattern of secretions left on a corroded metal panel. I'm going to use that and then grab the other one. Oh, there's actually even another one. Okay, well, let's use it again. Anything else I can toss out or should toss out? Avoid bud, I have two of them because I'm definitely going to be getting more samples. So let's use that for power. And then all these other stuff are unique, I think. Yeah, it's all unique. Might run out of space. Narrow passage. Thick knots of wires are strung between the angular buildings. Ducts and pipes poke through the pockmarked metal plates. building entry. The whole facade of this building has been torn away. The rough shapes of metal furniture and tools lie in the sand. E. Harrison. Deep retrieval needs more repairs. They need to stop pushing so hard. The artificers aren't going anywhere. End. The artificers. Hold on. Artificers. Isn't that a term we've heard before? Was that one of, one of the creatures or? We've definitely heard that before. Buried desk. The distinct shape of a metal desk lies half buried, its surface blurred by a thick coating of silt. H. Albright decrypting. Uh, say again? Constantine did what? Jesus Christ. Harrison? Site 2 is breached. Power is spiking. Breached wall. The metal walls are buckled by pressure and corrosion, leaving a large wound in the side of this compartment. Haven. This entire corner of the room is piled with tons of rock and sand, leading to a gaping hole in the arcology in the arcology ceiling above. Fused machines. The angular shapes of heavy machinery are everywhere. Their delicate parts fused by corrosion into complex, thick feigned patterns. Machine room. The lines of fabricators and machines suggest this was some sort of machine room for the repair and maintenance of the arcology. Silt choked entry. 
Loose wires hanging across the doorway are clumped with fragile lumps of silt like tumorous growths. Trans transporter. An automated transport sled loaded with crushed storage cases juts unevenly out of the sand. Blocked passage. Passage to the northwestern part of the arcology is blocked by a huge rock slide, with boulders strewn across the concourse. Sandy clearing. In all directions, huge sand drifts shine in the dark. Among them, the shapes of crippled buildings resemble the remains of a desert city. Wait, we already read this one. I don't know why it showed up as white. Massive reach, life support will fail in two hours. Anyone from my call on this channel, please respond. Yeah, it just turned white again. Huh. Sealed alleyway. An alleyway cuts between piles of sand and loose rocks. Sealed up with a security iris after the breach. collapsing wall. Bent at a sharp angle, the wall here is coming away from the floor, leaving a sharp-edged opening into the room behind. User T. Sigurdsson. Sight 2 is silent, and there's nothing from the... Uh... Opelos. Site 1 is off the grid. Where are the rescue teams? Break room. The tables, the disordered rows of chairs. This had to be where they ate, where they spoke. How many lived here? Scattered seats. Chairs lie in disarray. What happened here? Was it sudden? Or a slow, creeping realization that everything was about to end? Pale polyp. The polyp's flesh recoils at the barest hint of pressure. But no further movement or response occurs. Work boots. A pair of work boots lie quietly in the corner, overflowing with silt. G. Volkova. The Ophelos is going down? God damn it, what are they doing to my ship? We're leaving now. G. Jones. Nothing from the Ophelos. Their feed just cut out. We're being erased here. By calls pulling the plug. I'm getting the feeling it's not the case that something... Uh, it's not the case that an accident happened, but it sounds like in an attempt to cover up what they had done wrong here. By call just killed everyone here. Less people to talk about what happened, right? Heavy drift. Sand slopes, sand slopes down over the tables and chairs from a breach in the wall. It's hard not to imagine witnessing the breach. K. 
Kei Mikami. Disobedience will be reported. Consider your next action carefully. And then GJ. Damn it, Koji, we're dead and buried here. Missing wall. Were these gaps smashed through when the arcology was breached, or are they part of the slow processes of rust and decay? Dark corner. The facility twists away into the dark drifts of pale sand filling its corridors as if it was an ancient tomb. Pale polyp. Spirals have been etched across the surface, representing the polyp's path of movement at the rate of an inch per week. Named Slow Mason. I'll call these Slow Masons for their careful glacial etching into the arcology's walls. They're hypnotic. Slow colorless polyps found inside the arcology ruins. They trace spirals across the metal remains of the facility, feeding off it. Etched corridor. The metal plates here are marked with elaborate spiraling patterns. Their makers, ghostly polyps, scrape back and forth, adding to their work. Bright spirals. The wall glistens with a thick secretion left by a polyp retracing the same pattern over and over. We could sample this thick mucus here. Oh, do I have room? One more spot. Oh, that's not something new. It's something we've already gotten. Well, I kind of desperately need them for oxygen. And then there's one more available, so let's just use this one too. Crushed room, the remains of a workshop or office, flooded with sand and rock, twisted metal plating hanging from bent frames. Bent desk, a metal desk pushed against the sand drift. A Baikal branded mug holds a pile of rotting paper from drifting away. And I love how all of these descriptions are creating such a vivid image in my mind of what this place looks like. K. Tetsurudu? Tetsuruda? Uh, no one is coming to dig us out. Constantine has cost us everything. The entry hall just breached. This is it. Constantine cost us everything. What did Constantine do? Another message said, like, Constantine did what? Blocked corridor. Sand has filled this corridor, which looks to have led back into the entry hall. The breach must have been catastrophic. Double check and we did read these. I'm like 99% sure we did. Disobedience will be reported. Yeah. Crushed room. This room is totally obliterated by rock and sand. The shards of bent wall are the only remains of the building. F. Galarza. I'm sorry, Isabel, for what we did here. That's it.
ruined berths. Among the sand drifts that fill these four buildings are the shapes of tiered bunks. This is where they slept. This place isn't a facility. It's a city. How many more died here? Those without dive recorders, those buried under rock and sand. Ugh, it makes my skin crawl. Berth's Entry The door to the berths is slid back, revealing the sand-choked beds of the Arcology's occupants. Crew Berth A set of overalls lie flat in the berth, wisps of sediment drifting from their openings. A Baikal logo is still faintly visible. Hey, Anderson. You don't know that, Jason. They are going to come for us. And Jason, no one is coming. We both know that. J. Op Opaly? I lied to get here, Kai. And now I'm going to pay for it. And Kai, what do you mean? Jay again. This isn't even my real name. Crew quarters. On the still intact berths lies decomposing clothes, a single glove, a pair of round clouded glasses. Yato. I'm going to get some shut eye. First geoengineering shift is in four hours. See you in three. Sand drifts. Behind the crew quarters, huge pipes sit against the wall surrounded by sand. What was powering this place when it was in operation? Huge pipes. Were these supplying the power for the arcology? Perhaps a geothermal plant buried deep below? Collapsed tunnel. The wide tunnel to the northern part of the arcology has completely collapsed. Is there anything left under all these tons of rock? shattered atrium. This octagonal atrium was clearly once lined with glass and filled with water, an aquarium at the heart of the facility. Are those corals? They must have brought them from the ocean reserves on Earth. Hard coral. Earth-born corals these polyps build environments for themselves through the calcareous material deposited as their skeletons. Brain coral, earth originating species of coral from the families Musidae and Marolinidae. They feed through both photosynthesis and filtering. Central atrium. The derelict atrium reaches upwards, its sculpted rock towers rising into the dark. We can use it to reach the upper levels. Decorative rocks. Basalt towers brought from the slopes above to decorate the aquarium, a reminder for the occupants of the ocean above their heads. glowing fan. The fan seems to have a symbiotic relationship with the corals. It consumes their spawn and they absorb the fan's light. Fan 
iron sheath. I think that gives us a lot of oxygen. No, just power. You know what? I think I'm actually going to ep end the episode here. I don't want to. I want to finish exploring this place, but I've been constantly talking for about an hour and a half playing this, and my voice is just shot. So I think I better stop. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. I am extremely curious what this place is all about, and I cannot wait to learn more. But that's going to have to wait for the next episode. <laughs>